The newest update in Backpack Battles adds a lot of interesting changes to the variety of fan favorite items. By fan favorite, I mean nerfing the overpowered items. It also adds an extremely crazy shield evolution that I believe is a little bit too overpowered, but it's a lot of fun to use. In this video, my friends, I'll be going over the newest changes to the game and what that means for the future meta. Starting with the Spectral Dagger being crafted with a Mana Potion instead of a Mana Orb. Personally, I believe this makes Spectral Dagger easier to get considering the items used and the Mana Potion are less rare than the Mana Orb itself. I think this helps Hammer builds out there since getting the Spectral Dagger is an essential part of the build. So for you Hammer Builders out there, plus one. Belladonna's Whisperer received a nerf. The amount of damage that the star weapon needs to achieve went from a 7 to an 8. Personally, I don't think this is a huge change, but it was a nerf nevertheless. The Staff of Unhealing also got nerfed. The weapon no longer has the ability of healing by 4 when its mana is used. The Poison Delay on the Strong Poison Flask increased from 5 seconds to 6 seconds, a slight nerf to those poison builds. The Platinum Customer Card received yet another buff of going from 6% to an 8% chance on seeing a unique item. The Ruby Chunk got an increase in damage by 2. The Fancy Fencing Rapier got a slight buff, it's cooldown decrease, so it'll attack slightly faster. And finally, they increase the damage of the following weapons by one. The Poison Dagger, the Pananomium, the Excalibur, the Tuscan Piercer, and Crossblades. Overall, I believe all of these changes are pretty valid, with the biggest being the recipe change in Spectral Dagger, in my opinion. It's very interesting that they did that. However, I do believe this is a positive change, and it makes the hammer builds that much stronger since you get one of your most essential weapons very early. And finally, the brand new item, the Moon Shield. Arguably my favorite item in the game. Now to craft the shield, all you need is the Shield of Alor along with a Mana Orb. The shield will now gain one mana for each 10 block gain from the star items. So it basically adds another form of mana generation. Now let me explain why this item is amazing. There are a lot of items in the game that will give you block. However, not that many items give you infinite block, meaning it gives you block over time. There are two key items in my opinion that work best for giving you that block over time. The first one being the Steel Goober and then the second one being the Vampiric Armor. Reason being they both give you enough block in order to activate the Moon Shield but they also give you that block infinitely meaning it will infinitely activate the Moon Shield so you can essentially infinitely get that mana activation off. So that basically means it has a whole new activation on the moon shield itself on top of the 35% activation that the shield basically gives you. This can be really good for activating Gubert or the piercing arrows. So let me break this down for a little bit. Let's say you have vampiric armor right next to a moon shield right next to a Gubert. Every time that vampiric armor goes off or even every time that still Gubert goes off it'll activate the moon shield and the moon shield will activate every time you gain 10 block from the star items. With the Vampiric Armor giving you 20 block, that's two activations. And with the Steel Goover giving you that 16 block, that's one activation. Which means the Moon Shield pretty much activated three times, which you can take that and put those three activations right next to the Steel Goober, which it directly benefits. And not to mention, the Steel Goober and the Vampiric Armor get a 30% increase. Now, I believe with a full-blown mana build, I believe that is the strongest build in the game. Stronger than the Double Fortuna's Grace Ripshaw build, stronger than the Belladonna's Whisper Poison build, stronger than Bloodthorn build as long as you can get the right items. And let me explain why. You're gonna get a lot of armor just from the Vampiric Armor along with the Steel Goober. If you combine this with a Mana Thirst, you also practically get healing because when the Mana Thirst gains that 20 mana, you will steal 12 life, which means you'll pretty much be healing. Not to mention the Leaf has the ability of healing you as well along with cleansing debuffs. Now, if you combine this with a couple of Ruby Jewels on your shield along with your Vampiric Armor, that pretty much increases the amount of healing you do and the amount of damage that you deal because you're stealing life. Not to mention the Steel Goobert itself, it gives you that plus two damage on your weapon and you can combine this with a Mana Torch for even more DPS scaling. And while you're at it, you might as well add in an extra Mana Orb with a Jin and get that even more damage along with the other benefits of the Mana Orb giving you just a bunch of random buffs. So essentially, you're getting an infinite scaling of DPS, an infinite scaling of block and an infinite scaling of healing. The three essentials you'll pretty much need 
need to beat anyone. Now, granted, this does take a few RNG to get lucky to get the correct items when you need it so you don't die early, but once you have it, you won't die. Overall, I think this shield is amazing, and honestly, I think it might just get nerfed because how good it is. But before then, make sure you guys have a lot of fun with it. I'll also be dropping a fresh video tomorrow with showcasing the shield. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about the shield or about any of the changes in general, and feel free to drop a subscribe if you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time.